day trading versus end of day trading. Stay tuned traders, we'll talk about that next. G'day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading, uh, just down at the park. It's uh, Friday evening and uh, dogs have had their second uh, workout of the day. We're at the beach this morning, of course. But uh, today, uh, talking about day trading versus end of day trading. And, um, you know, I've, one of the things I'm going to clarify, first of all, is obviously um, there's going to be varied opinions on, on um, both types of trading. But I'm going to tell you just a little bit on my perspective. I've, I've gotten a couple of emails and um, actually quite a few emails regarding that, regarding end of day trading versus day trading. And I'll tell you what my experience has been and why I think um, I'm biased towards one. But, it, you know, it's like anything. If you're making money, if you're doing things that are working for you, by all means, keep doing what you're doing. You know, the purpose of my, my blog is to add value to people, to help them stay on track, to help them stay focused, to help them improve, to help them stay focused on constant progress, but also to be focused on trading and, and the activities around successful trading that are going to be sustainable long term. And, you know, I call it the maximum effective dose. What, the, what you can do with the minimum amount of time to have the maximum amount of effect. So it's uh, getting rid of the clutter, getting rid of things that are complex and hard and difficult and focusing on simplicity and things that are duplicatable and reproducible day in and day out, week in and week out, year in and year out. So my experience with uh, originally, you know, as I've talked about in, in earlier videos, is that uh, I was exposed to end of day trading on the futures markets. I had some very excellent instruction from, from some very successful traders. However, at that point in my learning curve, I felt that, um, you know, although I had received some great instruction, I probably didn't receive enough that I could have, you know, the, the, the type of learning that you have to go through of your own experience before you can appreciate why the, the education that you receive or the information that you receive is of any value. And so I went on a journey where I um, ended up going to shorter time frames and then eventually to the currency markets. Uh, from from the in futures Australian futures exchange on the index to a whole journey there, wh which revealed all of my shortcomings and weaknesses, and um, where I was in where I was, you know, ultimately going to be able to completely undo myself because of emotional, irrational, impulsive behaviors. Where I've talked about, it. you've heard if you've been following me, you've heard me talk about blowing up small trading accounts, but. My experience on for day trading is that most day well 99% of day traders lose money. If you don't think so, um, dig deep. Uh, go watch Anton Creel's videos. Go study. You know, go look at the hard data from the brokers. Even with with traders who have profitable, successful trading systems, they often inevitably aren't profitable and consistent because they engage in activities on live charts that ultimately you know, end up, you know, even if they're consistent short term, they'll end up blowing up their account on two or three small trades through revenge trading, anger trading, uh, emotional impulses, uh, over leveraging, moving stops, not using stops, chasing trades, uh, you know, trading the news, all these little things that, that um, you know, the industry itself will have a lot of stuff out there that will perpetuate, um, you know, negative losing behaviors. So, you know, going back over the longer term to end of day trading, uh, one of the reasons for that was that as I've, as I've talked about in other videos, I feel that number one, for me, most of my mistakes occurred on day trading, but number two, um, the, the uh, you know, my original goals were about taking positions in the market, putting my stops in place, you know, predefining my risk, having a, some degree of profit target in place. At that point, I probably didn't really understand asymmetrical profit targets to losses but then um, you know the idea was to be off the screen be able to make money and manage a portfolio of any size based on the end of day markets whether it was in futures or forex and um, you know that's been a journey as well but I but I but I believe at this point that I have a, a methodology that is sustainable um, and simple and you know, all I can do is trade that and monitor my expectancy. By no means is it the holy grail. You know, I've had people ask me what my returns are and, and different such scenarios. But 
the thing is, regardless of what my returns are, you know, even the best fund managers have blown themselves up. It's about what you're able to do and incorporate into your lifestyle, what's realistic, what, what an, a reasonable expectation is for your account size and your skill set and, and your edge. Um, but I do believe that end-of-day trading, the real money is made over the longer time frames. If you've had a chance to study Peter Brand or Schaubacher's work or any of the classical charting, uh, where they look at you know compression patterns over weekly charts, uh, daily charts, um, you know these these asymmetrical risk reward opportunities that are significant when you're able to identify markets that are setting up. And again, the market charts only allow you a method of tracking things. They are by no means infallible, but your risk management is really where, regardless of what time frame you're trading, it's your risk management, your ability to manage risk. Um, that's going to determine whether or not you're going to be able to stay in the game. You know, one of the things I talked about uh, with a friend of mine just yesterday was that some of the hesitations I have with short time frames, shorter time frames in day trading is that whether or not, you know, even if your data is reliable, even a five second delay from actual live trading times, if you're day trading, could, could possibly be a one or two pip difference, which may not seem like much, but it may be the difference in your fill and your spread. Uh, and getting stopped out. So, um, you know, I have some, a lot of questions regarding the day trading uh, and how reliable the brokers are, whether they're ECNs or, you know, just normal retail brokers. But for the retail traders, the odds are stacked against this. And I, I seriously think that you can position yourself with the smart money on the longer time frames, and also manage that across, you know, a, a basket of instruments, whether it's four or six or 10, whatever you're capable of managing. Um, but I, again, the number one thing that I'll say, and I'll say this over again, there's a hundred, there's a thousand ways to trade the markets on different time frames, different ways. But you know, the reality of it is most, most retail traders are full, have full-time employment and they're, they're looking at, you know, the markets as a ways to replace their income, maybe to improve their lifestyle, maybe to travel, maybe just to, uh, you know, just change their whole life. But it's difficult to you're up against the best people in the world the the best systems the best you know the best educated they got better equipment they got better access to information they've got every the deck is loaded it's like going to vegas the house has the upper hand um so you know one of the things that i think is paramount for retail traders is when you look at the longer time frames the, the money is positioned a lot of that money is positioned in the market to over sustainable to sustain longer term moves. So if you can piggyback on that and get a portion of it, sometimes, um, you know, and get consistently good at that, that can become a significant, you know, uh, because of the leverage. And even if you're just leveraged to a small amount, that can still become a significant amount of money if you're able to do it consistently without being on the screen. So I think that uh, if you're spending a lot of time on the screen in shorter time frames and you're not able to be consistent or you're not able to be profitable, again, I would, I would urge you to consider looking at end of day trading uh, or longer time frames. So there's some excellent education out there. And you know, even just uh, like we talk about in my seven step daily routine for high performance traders, if you haven't done so, go to my blog, download it, it's an audio file. That's about ritualizing yourself into the habits and the daily routines that are gonna help be, con and be congruent with the goals that you're after but breaking it down into the smallest habits, into the simplest parts of your day, into a small time frame, and doing that day in and day out, regardless of where you're at, no, make no excuses. There is no excuses, you got one shot at this, so you either do it or you don't do it. There's no trying, there's no, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. You do it and you start today. You accelerate your learning, you, you set your goals, you create a vision statement of the trader and the person that you wanna become, and you work at it day after day after day, like Mark Douglas says, be that person starting today. So you can cut the crap, uh, regardless of what time frame you're on. You're either, you know, if you're if you're trading on five-minute charts or end-of-day charts, the number one rule is predefine your risk, manage your capital. Number two, you got to have an asymmetrical risk reward, or you need to have a high hit rate on your trading system. And number three, you need to have all scenarios covered for managing that trading process through all different types of market conditions. You know, time stops, profit targets. Uh, you know how to move your stop all of those things and until you've cut your teeth and gone through the different scenarios that are going to happen um, regardless of the time frame you're on there's still going to be lots of learning to happen uh, you know 
the biggest thing we talk about is building discipline and confidence and a winning mindset to master your trading system. Trading mastery is a lifelong journey, traders. It will require you to work at it day in and day out, and that's the purpose of daily pip talk every single day making progress. So hopefully you got some value from today's video, regardless of the time frame you're on. For me, end of day trading is definitely the way forward and um, there's no turning back. So have a great trading week. Stay disciplined, stay focused, keep getting better. How good can we get traders? The sky's the limit and may the markets go with you. Hi traders, it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined and may the markets go with you.